Okay, if you want to check out the previous videos with the previous laptops, I highly recommend you to do that because they're perhaps a little bit more on the budget friendly uh, side. Now it's a little bit more expensive laptops, but let's take a look then. As you can see, we have got our 16 core CPU here, 32 gigs of RAM. This is DDR5 and 4800 megatransfers per second. Intel iGPU and RTX 4080 laptop GPU, which has 12 gigabytes of dedicated memory. So let's start on this one here. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows. Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. When clicking around on the timeline, it's extremely, extremely uh, smooth here. 8-bit, 420, 60 frames per second, H.264 is just buttery, buttery smooth. Hitting play. Oh. We did drop an odd two frames, but this was probably, I don't know why, but as you can see, it's absolutely fine. Going to the next one, this now is 10-bit, 420, 24 frames per second, H.265. So the bit rate now has changed and pressing play, it can play back full resolution, 4K, absolutely no problem like all of the other laptops we've tested, not much difference here. This is 10-bit 30 frames per second, H.264. And this is gonna go on software, meaning it will be played back on the CPU. And what I can see here is extremely smooth uh, timeline, clicking through and even scrubbing. Scrubbing isn't that... smooth no scrubbing can do it but because that is all on cpu it's it's not quite able to do that let's press play but playing back again full resolution with adjustment layer on top absolutely no problem at all moving on to asia 264 but this is 25 frames per second 422 10 bit which usually i find quite hard to play back because it's played back on the CPU. Clicking through the timeline is a bit of a, a bit waiting. When you're scrubbing through, it does find the frames where as you can see, CPU is 100% utilized. Pressing play, it's quite instant, zero frames dropped. Actually it does wait a little bit and then go. But I'd say completely editable. This is SI now. And obviously scrubbing is completely different. It's much easier to scrub through. It's it's less compressed. And now when pressing play, it again plays back no problem. This is 10 bit 422 60 frames per second H.264. So this is on the CPU now. When pressing play, let's have a look. Okay, slightly now are we dropping frames? Oh, only one frame. Wow, this is able to do that. That's interesting. Quite a bit of it is going on the GPU. Um, the GPU can actually real time play back this Lumetri color, 60 frames per second, 4 to 2, 10 bit, 60 frames per second. Did I say that already? Yeah. Scrubbing is quite smooth. Obviously this goes back on the CPU. So played back on the CPU, there's no hardware acceleration. So knowing that it's actually quite smooth and you can do that. This is Asia 265, 10-bit, 4 to 0, 50 frames per second footage. And it's extremely smooth. This is played back on the iGPU. As you can see, it's a hardware acceleration. We're utilizing Intel QuickSync. You can see iGPU is 100% utilized when I'm scrubbing through here. You can see the decoders here at work, decoder one. There's actually two, two decoders there. Pressing play, full resolution. It can play it back, no problem. I don't see in any issue so far in any of the codecs. Just incre incredibly, incredibly uh, powerful and smooth. This is Canon R5. 4K, 60 frames per second, Asia 265, 10-bit 422 footage, which usually is absolutely killer of a system, but because we've got Intel QuickSync and the iGPU, it's buttery, buttery smooth. Unfortunately, if you went with AMD, um, you wouldn't get this type of playback, but this is so buttery smooth, I just can't tell you. When pressing play, 
it can do that as well. No problem, zero frames dropped. It's absolutely insane. Now, this is where things get a little bit more complicated and hard. I'm gonna change the memory here as well so that I'm not reserving much for the other applications. Only 30, 29 gigabytes can be used by this, so we'll see how much we do. But this is Canon C200 4K Canon RAW footage. This is 60 frames per second, and this is DCI 4K. Scrubbing is quite nice. Pressing play, let's see if we can do it. Not quite. As you can see, the CPU power here is a little bit weak. So far, it's still the best of what, what, what I've seen on this. The Zenbooks weren't quite able to do that. But this here actually does play it back. Not all the frames and drops odd frames, but it's still okay. I doubt you would actually edit this at full resolution. But I'd say it's doable. 4K Red Raw. Let's scrub through. Absolutely as smooth as a baby's bottom. So, so, so buttery smooth. It's just incredible. Pressing play. Especially when I'm looking back on the laptop screen because that's 240 hertz. It feels so, so smooth. But in here, obviously, that plays back, uh, what is it, 60 frames per second. So it's not as, as smooth, but in there. As you can see, zero frames dropped. 4K Red Raw, no problem, no issues at all. Now this is 120 frames per second and there's lots of different ones um, in here. If you can zoom in, you can see there's 4208 8-bit and then there's 422 10-bit, H.264 are the blue clips and the yellow clips are H.265 and one of them is 420 and one of them 422 10-bit. So they use different encoders. This one here plays back quite nicely actually, or the scrubbing is quite nice. And that, that seems fine as well. I know it's not playing all of the frames back, it's dropping frames, but it's doable. You don't need to see all of the 120 frames per second. Now the 422 on the CPU is a little bit of a, yeah, it's, it's not quite, it's dropping. You can see it feels a bit more laggy, it drops a bit more frames, but if you put it to a quarter of a resolution or something like that, Let's press play now. Not much of a difference, to be honest. Let's try H.265, 420. That should go on the iGPU. Yep, as you can see, we are going on the iGPU. Very interesting. It's doable. If you edit 4K footage, 422 or 420, H.264 and 5 from your cameras, it's completely doable. Now, this is where the previous laptop started to struggle and I'm curious to see what's going on because we're entering above 4K footage, okay? This is 5K red footage. Let's go. This does go on the CPU. It does play it back-ish. Not all of the frames, but it's much better than the previous ones. So 5K Red Raw, maybe not so much. 6K Red Raw, I doubt it here as well. Mm, nope. Full resolution scrubbing. It's all right, but I guess you'd be editing this at quarter of a resolution. And then it's a bit more buttery smooth, pressing play, and then you can play it back at quarter resolution. So you can actually edit it on a laptop as well if you wanted to. But full resolution. <gasps> is it playing it back here? Yep, this is Red Komodo 6K, and it plays it back a little bit better. Dropped a few frames in between the two clips, but it is playing it back full resolution 6K. That's pretty crazy. Now this is B-RAW 6K without color grade, absolutely buttery smooth to, you know, scrub through and hitting play, it's completely doable. Add the color grade, the GPU starts to do stuff. It's dropping an odd frame, but you can see that the CPU is kind of the bottleneck there. 
using a lot of RAM as well, probably worth going for 64 gigabytes if you're editing above 4K. But it's it's this is two B-Raw 6K clips on top of each other and it's playing it back, so B-Raw isn't that hard to play back, so I wouldn't worry about that. Canon R5 8K, okay, I'm gonna start it with quarter resolution. Let's see what happens. <gasps> okay, it's doable. It does drop a few frames, but it's doable, which is quite impressive for a laptop. That's seriously impressive for a laptop, in fact. Screwing is completely fine as well. So yeah, let's try half the resolution. Yeah, now we're dropping a lot more frames and it's kind of uncomfortable to play back, but quarter of a resolution. That's doable. That feels good to me. 8K Red Raw uh, with color grade. Let's hit play. It kind of plays it back. It's not perfect. It's got, it's dropping some frames, but you can actually edit it if you want it at half the resolution full resolution yeah it's a bit of a lag now completely completely gone let's try a quarter of resolution red 8k whoa very instant very quickly just went boom and go scrubbing is buttery smooth so put it on quarter of resolution and edit on a laptop what do you know this is insane okay 12 kb raw Full resolution, I doubt it's going to play it back because I haven't seen any PC play that back. Nope. Let's try half. Nope, even half is quite struggling. Okay, let's try quarter. Yeah, quarter of a resolution does it. Still like a bit of a lag there, but it is doing it. But come on. Who's going to edit 12K raw at full resolution? So now you've seen like what we've uh, done here. And as you can see, memory is a bottleneck in some of these higher end codecs or higher resolution codecs. But let's take a look at the hardware. Then how did our, you know, PC do? In terms of physical memory used, we use literally all of it up here. As you can see, 32 gigabytes, we, we used all of it, maximum amount. So memory is definitely one of the bottlenecks in some of these instances here. In terms of CPU clock speeds, there's two cores here that have gone five gigahertz. Uh, in fact, one of these, the Pico 4, has gone almost 5.1 gigahertz. If you're looking at the CPU core temperature, then we did hit 100 degrees and we did thermal throttle. And let me guess, pretty much all of the Picos apart from two Pico 6 and 2, which is normal for a laptop. CPU package was about 104 degrees and maximum we pulled was 96 watt from the socket. Not bad for a laptop to pull that much power. In terms of GPU, uh, the GPU pulled up to um, 129 watts, 109 watts from the um, socket and the maximum memory was 84 degrees and GPU was 69 degrees. So not bad at all, but bear in mind, we didn't do like a very long test here. So that's, that's that. Now, one more thing that we have to do here is the actual timeline or export test okay we've got the timeline here we're gonna hit hit export and let's see how good is this gonna do because now on the 4080 on the laptop we have dual encoders so youtube 4k settings let's put this on the desktop send to media encoder let's zero this okay media encoder is ready there let's leave these on that side and let's press go. Bear in mind, this is a 20 minute timeline and we'll see how fast is this going to do it. If it's going to do it faster than 20 minutes here, that's absolutely incredible. As you can see, both of the encoders on the RTX 4090 are working now. Encode 1 and encode 2, two you can see are working there and the GPU is 100%. 
Uh, let's have a look how much wattage are we pushing through there. The CPU is thermal throttling or was thermal throttling there. Let's take a look at the GPU, how much wattage, 144 watts we've pushed, 118 watts. As you can see now we're really keeping or pushing that RTX 4080 to the maximum. It looks like it might be able to do it faster than one on one time, but we're going to find out. Okay, we're almost done with the first test. I'm going to do it a um, second time as well after the fact, and I'll tell you then if the second test was, um, you know, similar time or not as well. But what we can see here is that the GPU power, we have pulled 158 watts, which is quite a lot, 160 watts from the GPU. And then the CPU power, we pulled 92 maximum. At some point, hit 104 degrees. Yes, thermal throttle the most of the cores. Uh, in terms of RAM, we used about 24 megabytes. But the more interesting thing is, if you look at the GPU and GPU memory allocated, we can see that we used pretty much all of the 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the GPU, uh, which really helps with this export speed as well. We encoded it in 22 minutes and 44 seconds. That's pretty much real time encoding of all sorts of different clips, all of the different codecs that we use there. There's 4K, 6K, 8K, 12K, zoomed in and um, scaled plus color grade on the top. That is impressive encoding in performance. It's even faster than the uh, 4070 laptop that we had. So you can see that this 4080 really does make a difference there uh, when we can encode that. That's absolutely in incredible. I'm going to do the test now again one more time to see if we can get it even faster. Is this laptop then good for video editing in Premiere Pro? And I'd say absolutely Yes, this is very, very powerful. I'd love this to have even powerful CPU in some of the instances there as well, but the GPU really helps here. The 4080 with the dual encoders, fantastic, especially when you're exporting on the go. And the Intel QuickSync for the timeline performance with H.264 and 5 codecs really, really helps here as well. Now, this is not as high quality materials used for the Zen book, what we had there from ASUS. And when you're actually interacting with the footage, you're not gonna see like OLED and perhaps the, the screen is a little bit different. It's not nine by 10 aspect ratio. And it might not be as nice to interact with the content and actually use like in terms of the trackpad and all the little features that ASUS has like that ASUS styles and things that will really like give something for creators but in terms of performance the omen is absolutely killing it if you want to check it out i'm going to leave the link in the description below but if you are a creator and you want to build the best bank for what creator pc then check out the build guide in the description below perhaps you're not interested in laptops you just want the pc and you want to get even better performance than this then check it out down in the description below thanks guys for watching bye bye